Hi, I'm Dr. Ruben Chen. I am the Chief Medical Advisor at Sunrider International, and I am the host of Sunrider's Vital Science Podcast, the show that keeps a finger on the pulse of health and wellness. Our mission is about helping people live healthy lives that are full of happiness and fulfillment. Sunrider creates the very best plant-based products for your health, beauty, and home. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Hi, this is Dr. Ruben Chen. Uh, welcome to our Vital Signs podcast. Today we have a very special guest. It is Eric Chen. He is the chief um, global chief of global manufacturing for Sunrider International. So, a lot of people gave us really great feedback over our last uh, podcast with Eric when we talked about some of the green initiatives. Uh, with our Sunrider products. And uh, we had a lot of questions um, regarding the quality measures that we put forward for our Sunrider products. So I figured let's do a podcast talking about how we manufacture our pod- products, some of the quality measures to make sure that our products are uh, high quality, and uh, some of the unique things that we do with our products. So, so welcome, Eric. How are you doing? Hello. Hey, it's, it's good to be back. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so um, real quick, before we get started, can you give um, just a quick background into your uh, knowledge? Um, like, what is your expertise? Well, um, I mean, I guess I could say I'm an expert at Sunrider, <laughs> but uh, I've been studying that since I was a little kid. Yep. Uh, but I have a background in biochemistry and organic chemistry, and uh, so it just helps with being able to understand, be able to read scientific articles, to be able to understand uh, a lot of the different um, um, research that has been done on different types of herbs. And it's you know it's it's interesting reads. You know you got to read about a lot of different kinds of foods. I, I like it better than. Uh, than other kinds of stuff because you know you're dealing with with, with health foods things that are good for you. And so what? Why do you think it's important, or what value does having that knowledge do in being uh, helping to run and create products for Sunrider? Why can't we just hire somebody else to do it? Why? Do, why do you have to have? And wh- I mean, and for those of you who don't know, I I'm also a, um, I'm a medical doctor, and uh, w- why is it important for people who help to create the products to have that kind of knowledge? Well, I think in terms of creation of products, I mean, it, it's important because of you know, Dr. Chen and his philosophy of regeneration, and the and the way that he likes to, or you know, he's he's talked about how he formulates the products how it's dealing with the different types of systems. And then, and so that being a part of Sunrider and being able to talk with Dr. Chen has, it's, it's definitely a lot of education that you would not be able to get at school in terms of how uh, different types of herbs interact with the body. Uh, There has definitely been a lot more research on these types of topics as of late. And so utilizing, you know, the things that I've studied helps sort of supplement uh, that base knowledge that uh, Dr. Chen has shared with us. Um, but it's it's important to have this knowledge because, you know, our bodies are complex. There's a lot of different things and, and different ways that herbs interact with, with us and to be able to understand, to be able to dig down into the, you know, the, the molecular level is important for us to be able to to understand how they interact with the body, being able to uh, pair different types of herbs with other kinds of herbs or, or ingredients so that they have a more holistic and natural effect. Mm-hmm. And um, for those of you who don't know, I mean, uh, Dr. Chen is our father. And when he speaks to us, um, oftentimes, especially when it's in regards to a product, um, he will make reference to a product and a research article that uh, we should be able to read ourselves and be able to understand. So without that 
um, basic understanding of how to read scientific articles, especially ones in regards to uh, organic chemistry or uh, biological sciences. Sometimes it, the uh, the articles themselves can be difficult to understand, or um, if you don't um, if you don't understand how to decipher the language of those scientific articles, you may be looking at the wrong things. So it's really important to have some background into researching those articles and understanding how to analyze them uh, in order to know um, more about our products, how to explain them, um, how to improve upon the existing products and how to design new ones. So that's, um, you know, yeah, my, my is... dad is often using scientific language when he talks to us. So we have to have some scientific background. Yeah, it's like you you pick up a bottle of anything at a, at a grocery store and be able to look at the, the ingredients, be able to understand what what's in there, why it's in there, you know, and not just rely on somebody else who who says, oh, don't use this, don't use this. When you know you understand a little bit of the background, it helps with identifying why some things are necessary, why others aren't. So. That's a little bit of background about us and why we think it's important for us to understand um, understanding how to design the products. But um, on our uh, research and development team, what kind of people do we usually have on our team as well? So, I mean, we have a lot of different types of people. We have uh, PhDs in, in uh, food science and different types of uh, skin care as well, uh, as well as Analytical chemists, we have uh, molecular biologists. They're all people who are in lots of different types of uh, degrees of speciality that are necessary to help us uh, so that we can direct the work. Yeah, and, and um, what, um, one of the things that is important as well, and Eric was alluding to this, is that we have people from various backgrounds uh, to help bring together different ideas. We, um, this is probably something that's also pretty unique in Sunrider because we do create so many unique products. It's important for us to bring in a lot of talent, uh, with a, ver from a variety of, uh, research backgrounds into our company. Yeah. So, um, w what makes, um, our products unique and and not just um because we have that kind of background but what makes them unique and how we make our products this is probably uh one of the things that is um i remember when we were growing up my dad would say uh nobody will ever make products the way sunrider makes products so can you explain a little bit about our how we make products yeah, so I guess you, there there are kind of a couple of areas I think that are important. One of them uh, we talked about is formulation, and I know that uh, I mean our formulations are unique, and that it really is uh, one of the fundamental building blocks of what makes Sunrider products so great. The other thing, and I think this is what you want me to elaborate more on, is um, our process uh, that we use to make the products, and this is something that Dr. Chen. He has really emphasized is the need to be able to control the process to be able to manufacture our own products and um, the way the fact that we manufacture our own products i think is very unique and the process in which we do it because not only do we manufacture and this is more than just mixing stuff that we buy from other people together but we we create every ingredient um, that we have in our products. All of the herbs, we will buy the actual herb and then we will be able to uh, do our extraction, our concentration, our, our drying process to be able to make the different kinds of powders and blend them into the unique formulations that we have for all of our food products. And so the way that we, um, we do that concentration is very unique to Sunrider. Uh, it is, sort of what we call the the heart of, of the food side of, of Sunfire. And that is very unique. The, yeah, that's probably the, the, the 
the next biggest thing. And then I guess the third is um, throughout the process, and you, you talked about this in the beginning, but our, our quality is really unmatched. The, the, the safety, the testing, all of the different processes that we have in place are so important uh, to leave us with low incidence rates as well as a high quality uh, food product and you know our skincare cosmetics. We try to maintain the highest quality. So when you talk about uh, concentration, um, I know that we've talked about our multi-step um, concentration and then product uh, pathway. What what are some of the steps? Uh, so we have the uh, first. We have the product. We clean it. Um, we do yeah. our extraction so process from the very beginning. I mean, it's so important to be able to pick the right kind of herbs uh, because herbs vary depending on where they grow because you know they absorb nutrients from the soils and so whether it's in china or south america or india or other places around the world the type of herb and where they grow are very important to the quality of the herb that we can receive here into the texas manufacturing plant and so that's kind of where things start is to be able to look at where they're going, assess the quality of the herb before we move into the cleaning. Um, and then we, from there, we go through and we will uh, grind and chop up the different types of herbs into sizes that are good for our extraction process. And then we will, we have different types of temperature settings, times, durations that are extraction that are very important to be able to kind of be able to do more of these whole herb, whole food extractions that we do on all of our different types of plants. And a lot of the extraction, you know, they they happen in conjunction with multiple types of herbs. We don't do just one, but multiple herbs together, depending on the type of product. And they help with, with the extraction. And from there, we move to our concentration um, and, you know, there, there's a lot of proprietary settings that we go into this, but, and our different process uh, that, that we use with that. And then we'll, we'll spray dry it or float coat it onto uh, the herbs themselves to, so that they adhere and bind to it better uh, and we can absorb through it into our stomach and into our body better. When you talk um, about extractions, oh, wh when you talk about extractions, how is that different than, uh, say, a pharmaceutical company trying to extract like an individual ingredient from from an herb or something like that? Yeah, when, when you're doing something like that, uh, I think we're we're kind of going against the the idea of the philosophy of regeneration because we believe that the plant itself, you know, there's multiple different components to the plant. It's like what when Dr. Chen talks about food, you know, food isn't just a compilation of protein, carbohydrates, uh, different types of vitamins. There, there's a lot more that go into it that adds to the nutritional value when we eat different types of foods. Otherwise, you know, we'd be going back to like the Jetsons and and just taking a pill, and and we'd be we'd be good enough there. And yeah, well, some of that may be good enough to sustain us all. For, for a little while, we want to make sure that we're extracting kind of what we talked about as a whole food process. Uh, we're not isolates. We're not just looking for one ingredient because if you're just looking at one one specific molecule, I mean, you, you can make that in the lab. There's, mm -hmm. there's not much difference between making in a lab and cleaning that up versus extracting out just a single thing from a food. What what is the important then if you do extraction, then what is concentration and how are those different? Well, it's kind of like think of it like tea, right? If we take tea, you know, we we put the tea leaf into a hot pot of hot water, and from there, you know, the, it makes all of the water uh, that tea flavor. And so you're thinking about it as you're extracting kind of some of the essence of that tea into the water. Um, in, uh, in order for us to eat enough 
of these herbs to affect our body, we need to concentrate that down. Uh, we need to be able to take that sort of uh, jar of tea into, condense it down into a single capsule or maybe multiple jars of that tea into a single capsule to be able to effectuate the kinds of change or the kinds of you know beneficial um, effects that we want from our our herbs. And it's a way for we us don't to just, eat a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then we just don't just do capsules. Obviously, we have powders and different types of foods mm -hmm. as well. Powders, uh, teas. We have liquid concentrates. There's a lot of different kinds of things that we can do. And then after we uh, have concentrated it and mixed it together, then then how do we make sure that it stays at the same quality from our from our manufacturing plant to somebody's home? Well, I mean that's it, the main thing is shelf life testing. We will test it out uh, for our powders. We have to make sure that they're dry, <clears throat> that there's no moisture because you know you. Yeah, food. You don't want to have moisture with food, and so so the the way we uh, seal our products, uh, the way we uh, yeah test shelf life. I mean, th these are all very important to be able to ensure quality. And the, so, when does quality control, or what exactly do they do to make sure that the quality maintains at, at that at the level that we want? Yeah, we actually have two different types of quality. We have quality assurance, we have quality control, and they are in the process from the very beginning. They will assist with uh, all the incoming herbs as they uh, come in and to be able to test throughout the, the process. We do an extraction, we will test after the extraction. We concentrate it down, we will test after concentration to make sure that every step along the way that we are adhering to the strict uh, quality requirements of that step. Um, you know, there, there's nothing worse than getting to the end of the day and finding something wrong and figuring out, you know, three or four steps before that we could have done something there. So we want to make sure that if there is something where we can effectuate change and make sure our quality is better, that we'll, we'll have it at that step. Um, and, you know, this way we can make sure that everything is coming out the way we want it to. So this sounds great. And I think that most people believe that all food companies do something similar. But how, how, how do most food companies manufacture products at, as compared to Sunrider? Well, I can tell you that their places are definitely not the same as what we do. We, we just recently had our GMP uh, audits by NSF and they, they came through and the inspector was blown away. She said that for, especially for a newly built manufacturing facility, we, um, we were heads and tails above all the competition in terms of cleanliness, in terms of making sure we had everything in order. Uh, and she, she said we passed with flying colors. And so, I mean, that, what is just, what right is GMP the, the cleanliness? Yeah. So GMP is just the um, good manufacturing process that, that we're that we're supposed to have. And uh, when when it, she says uh, heads and like heads, and so there's above like a minimum else. standard that people have for food uh, that that are required, and you know there are a lot of places that can do sort of that minimum standard. But you know us reaching out to NSF, they have a higher quality of standard than just general GMP. Uh, but even on their standard, they commented to us that um, that our place was, was very, very good. So, so we have the highest quality of cleanliness. Uh, our practices are obviously at the highest level. Um, what other ways? Uh, do we try to assure people that our products are also of high quality? What, like, especially with packaging, I know that this is a thing that people are concerned about. What is, what is unique about our packaging process? Well, our packaging, you know, I think 
some things that we do that that help us be very good and to get quality products it is I mean, we do a lot of different types of testing uh, while we're doing our process. There are definitely places that uh, that we found we can improve, and we are making sure that we're keeping our equipment uh, up to date. Uh, during the move process, we changed out a lot of old equipment because we found out that there are better ways to do things and, and that there are ways that we can keep things cleaner uh, while still maintaining that utmost quality, or we can find ways to have a better quality. And so we have made a lot of those changes in uh, investments into machinery and packaging equipment as we moved out to Texas plant. For those of you who don't know, at, at our LA plant, we were already at a very high level, and um, but we're always looking to improve. So we purchased some new equipment uh, that was even at a higher level than what we were already using. So um, uh, can, can you explain, so what is the NSF also? So NSF is, uh, Kind of like a third party uh, auditing group and they they do uh, gmp certifications for a whole host of you know different types of products i mean you probably have seen them on on all different kinds of goods and foods and, and different types of things and so uh, they're probably one of the biggest uh third party auditing bodies and so they have come over here and and put their stamp of approval also, um, beyond just food products, I know we do a lot of uh, skincare and um, uh, cosmetic products. What is the um, what is the manufacturing process like for those? Because things that you put on your face, especially on your face, um, need to be at a high quality. Can't just be something that you pick up uh, on the floor or something like yeah. that because your face is quite sensitive. I mean, a lot of that, like you're saying, it starts with formulation. Uh, there we will make sure that uh, all of the ingredients are high quality. They, they won't irritate the skin, that they're good for us, whether they're on our lips, our, our face, our hands, our bodies. Uh, it really all starts at that point. And then like we were talking about in the manufacturing, they go through the same types of processes that we do for the foods. Right? We, we test at every step, whether it's before um, we start formulating and mixing and creating the product and all of the, the steps before packaging, yeah, you know, to get us our different types of um, sort of skincare products. All right. And then, ob and then obviously for packaging, it's the same process as well. Um, mm -hmm. One of the, one of the unique things, and I think people don't realize this, is that we test um, as part of our safety process, we test our packaging uh, endurance as well. So it's not just we uh, see how well our products last over a period of six months or a year, uh, but we also have to test the packaging and see if the packaging is able to hold up for that entire period of time. What? Why is that important? Well, I mean, we test, you have to test the product inside the bottle or whatever kind of container because uh, it's together that, that we test shelf life, uh, whether it is, you know, food, skincare, cosmetics, compatibility between different types of material are very important. Uh, and there, sometimes you get, uh, you'll find a package that's made of the right material, but may interact with one of the ingredients inside your product. And so, you know, these are the things that we we, we need to test and to to check on before they come to the market. Um, and you know, we we work our hardest to to be able to make sure that it happens. Yeah, a lot of people are noticing nowadays. I think. Uh, some of the packaging has not been as thoroughly tested as some of those particles from the packaging end up inside the product that they're consuming or putting on their skin. And uh, those type of things are, are things that we uh, thoroughly test. 
what what are some of the other safety standards that we've put our products under to make sure that it, it's a it's a good product that it's not only safe for the individual but safe for the environment around us yeah i mean all of those things we it's part of our research as we go to developments that we look at where where do these ingredients come from you know how are how are they obtained you know what kind of under what conditions are they grown all all of these things are done at that research phase before we even make it to full formulation uh each of our ingredients we thoroughly vet vendors different types of things um as well as uh, you know testing it uh, you know our research team we, we we eat it ourselves. We try it on ourselves. We, there are different things that we do first before we, uh, you know, kind of spread it out to the to the other Sunrider staff and then do it for our testing. Yeah. Well, that's probably something unique is that we try all of our own products, obviously, before we, we give it to anybody else because we want to know if it is um, a good product. Um, and uh, But that formulation, obviously, I don't want to, consume anything that's dangerous. So that formulation process is obviously a tricky one. So we make sure that we're going to be good and safe as we are trying our own products and then sharing it with others. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, so uh, along with that, a lot of people ask, are our, our, our products, are they vegan? Uh, are they vegetarian? How do you, how would you explain that to people? Uh, generally we are vegan. I mean, it, it, there, we do have a couple of items, uh, like our sun bars, we had some vitamin fruits, uh, that, that have used some honey. And so there are some that are vegetarian, uh, but we are, we pretty much squarely land between these two, uh, vegan or vegetarian. Yeah. So, but no, um, uh, so most of our products are in between that vegan and vegetarian road. Um, now, in the past 40 years that we've been around, how, have, uh, how is it that we've kept up with our safety? What are some of the things that we do to make sure that our products are high quality and safe besides the certifications? I mean, what do we do at Sunrider? Well, I think that that's, uh, leads to what I had talked about a little bit earlier, we have QC, but we also have QA. And there's a difference between the two and how we run them. QC is the group that just, you know, they do all of the testing. You know, we do all of our micro testing, quality uh, identity tests. There are different types of uh, conformity tests. And the, this group is the one that does all the testing. We also have a different department inside Sunrider, which is our QA, which is the one that goes through, if we ever have any issues, we do quality assurance, right? Yeah, quality assurance. And we make sure that we do different types of self audits. If we ever have a product that comes back, they're the ones that do a full investigation onto, you know, how, how is this possible? Uh, if there, if there is an issue, sometimes it's as simple as, you know, they, they drop, they didn't put enough, um, sachets into my uh, 60 pack or, or 30 pack. And so they will go through and, and, and identify, you know, where are the potential um, sort of weak points along our process. And we will see, you know, what can we do to mitigate these types of uh, yeah, problems? We'll, we'll, you know, look at incidence rates. There's different types of things that analytics that we'll look through as a management team as we implement uh, uh, corrective solutions for different types of uh, things. But the process is ongoing. We do self audits yearly and you know spot checks regularly in terms of uh, you know QA. And um, I know we've besides uh, GMP, we have received other certifications and other manufacturing awards. Can you share some of the manufacturing awards that we've gotten? Well, yeah, um, I, I know that in Singapore is one of the ones our, our facility out there has been consecutively winning that uh, food grade A uh, awards. You know, I think we're going on 20 years in a row right now. Mm -hmm. So 
th these are things uh, just representative of the high quality that we are really pursuing at Sunrider Manufacturing, whether it's in Texas or, you know, Singapore, Taiwan, or China. Mm -hmm. And um, we, you, uh, how much of our product is made here? How much of our product is made at those other manufacturing locations? Well, we're really making almost, I would say, 95% of everything here. It all starts here. And then what goes to the other facilities is packaging for their market. And we do it this way so that we can maintain that quality. Uh, you know, you, you got to be in that, you got to be watching that cook in that house to make sure that it's the food comes out the right way. Yeah, so the, all in the end, it's all about control from beginning to end and making sure that everything is at the best quality that it can be. Yes. And um, so what uh, are, do people have other questions they usually hear about our manufacturing plot process or what, what are the, some of the other concerns or questions that people have asked you? Um, you know, I don't, I don't think I've had so many concerns or questions. I know mostly people are asking, you know, when, when are we getting our stuff, our products? So, and, it, you know, a lot of that's coming out really quick. It, it, we're, we're definitely opened up and, and it's shipping out. So that's mostly yeah. what people are asking right now. Those are probably the most common questions that, that we get. And, um, uh, you had made mention, I think, in the past that our manufacturing facility is completely open, right? And everything is, all, all the machines are running. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're there. Uh, some bars are probably a little lagging behind. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so uh, uh, any last words about uh, our Texas manufacturing plant or your feelings about it? Well, um you know, it's definitely been a phenomenal process to be able to be here, to be in Texas, to start the manufacturing really from the ground up. Uh, we, we call this our big startup that, that we're going through right now, bringing on new people, learning a lot of different things. Uh, it, it's been a, uh, an incredible learning experience being able to to continue and to push forward the legacy of Sunrider and the Sunrider products, uh, specifically yeah. in Sunrider manufacturing. And, and I think it's been, you know, things that are, it's, it's great. Yeah. And I, I think that's also really important to recognize, um, you know, in our LA manufacturing plan, we had been there for, um, I think like 20, 30 years and then moving to uh, Texas. Um, even though we have the knowledge uh, to restart uh, a manufacturing plant of that size and that kind of complexity, um, we call they do call it a startup because it is literally starting from the ground up from zero. So um, and that entire process, getting everything up up and going, uh, finding uh, new team members and uh, getting our machines and everything running at that level at that level. Um, is uh is definitely a process in itself <clears throat> all right so uh anyways i i want to thank eric for his time he is uh very busy that is an understatement and uh we are trying to get the products out to you and obviously to get the products out at the quality that we all have come to expect at sunrider uh, that is that requires a great team, and we have a really good team at our uh, Sunrider Texas manufacturing plant. Um, it, our process is unique, partly because it's so complex to make it at the quality that we're looking for. Yeah, thank so, you. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thanks everybody for listening. Um, and if you want to know more about Sunrider, you can see us uh, on our social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, and obviously at our website, sunrider.com. Or you can talk with your local independent business owner for more information and 
discuss about their products or favorite products that they like as well. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you like this episode, please subscribe to our channel. And if you haven't already, give us a thumbs up. You can also connect with us on Facebook and Instagram for more healthy living, inspiration, and tips at Sunrider International. 